Hey, good to see you. That means you haven't given up yet. Good. Last time we looked into the basics of modifying curves, meaning moving them around, splitting and trimming. Although we moved stuff around before, this was like really the first time looking actively into these options. And then today we go deeper into the curve tools and make sure you don't miss these lessons because these are essential. If you want to know Rhino, if you want to get good at Rhino, you need to know these things. And again, I will try to cover the Rhino version and the Grasshopper version, if applicable. Maybe not for everything, but you, so you will learn the principle. Because most of the time it's the same method and you can just apply, apply the knowledge on, on, the, on the, the other tool. Okay, fillets, fillets, fillets. Let's draw some lines here, polyline. And make a polyline. Okay. And you can see the fillets, maybe. I want this here. It's, it's, it's the same as this one, but it's more compact. We'll try to keep this uh, video fairly short, hopefully. You never know. It's uh, actually then you realize it's much more to look into. But um, yeah, so fillets, you can either type fillet. And if you type fillet, you will already see that there are different types. There's fillet, fillet corners, fillet edge. And edges and surfaces we will check in another video. That's when we get to solids and, and real 3D objects. But they work very similar. So whatever you learn on the lines, and on the curves you can apply most of the time pretty much in the same fashion on any surface except that you have more options then so okay i would just go through and click and you can decide if you want to click or if you want to learn the the command which, which i would recommend but uh, to keep things straightforward i would just click through and you can see first thing select the curve to fill it so if i select now this it actually took this as the first curve and then this as the second. And you see it made the fillet. I, I will go back, Control C. Um, and you now you can see you have options. Radius is, I can either press here and tap the radius or I can uh, type R and then the radius and it's five. And now if I do this, so it stores the radius, by the way. It says unable to trim or extend the curve. Radius, free. Okay, now it worked. So it's still one polyline, basically. There are other options. So for example, if my curve looks like this, I have two curves. I can do the same thing. So I can select these and select these, or if I don't want them to join, I can actually, so I right click, you have the command again. I can say join, either yes or no. At the moment it's no. And if I click these, then it made the fillet, but it didn't join the curves. And then now I do the same again, fillet. And now I say join, yes. Trim, yes. So I could do this. So it trimmed everything away and made my fillet here. I made a quick arc here so you can see that it actually also works with, with curves. So that also, also, it's also possible. So it keeps the arc until the point where it needs to do the fillet. Chamfer works pretty much the same way. So if I click here, you can you can uh, define the distance, let's say two, and then I can choose, so either it's 45 degrees, it means the distance is the same, but I can choose a non-symmetrical chamfer. So then I could, for example, use one. It's like this. And you can see actually on the grid, that's two and one, except this my text is so big, but yeah. That's chamfer, there's not much more to say. 
you're gonna have the same options here again join trim chamfer i never tried a chamfer with an arc let's try that oh yeah now it worked connecting actually this is something i normally use I'm, I'm, I'm a bit lazy and use the command fillet normally i do this fillet and then radius zero and then it makes a corner that's basically the same tool just that it does does it for you already so you don't need to put a radius zero so if i use this tool i can choose for example that line and this line then it's connected or i can choose something overlapping it's also working that's pretty much it and then you, again you have to join and and also how your lines extend we don't need this just leave it as it is for the moment next one next one is fillet corners and it's basically taking not just fillet not just one corner because you could of course you could do this say radius zero or one um, and fill it here and then you fill it here and then you fill it here and you could also i mean it's good if you have different ready the fillet corner tool does fillets everything so you just put the radius one and the selected curve will automatically fill it or if nothing is selected it will ask you to select the curve yeah or several curves you know it's also possible like this you know so taking all these yeah and done blending blending is super interesting so blend basically i could type in blend and i'm not sure if if, if i if i use this one then it is the simplified version or the adjustable curve blend let's see let's let's click for like i would do the right click first the quick blend curve okay okay as I understand so basically this option hmm, creates a continuous curve blend between two curves and it just assumes that you're happy with the result and then you still have your control points where you can adjust it the other version is the adjustable curve plan and there you can choose from different options so you can either choose and, and for, for both sides so the continuity is basically you can choose all kinds of different options and mix and mix, mix and match if i choose position then it, it's only like a kink he has chosen the tangency but i could choose the position as well so then i have just a line connecting curvature is similar to what we had before the the, the simple version turn off my grid because it's a bit annoying okay but it it just lets you basically move only along the direction of the of the connected curve to then choose the second one and then adjust adjust my curve yeah or with these options g3 and g4 basically gives me additional control points and i can can like really push it to an extreme version flip you can also flip it create this kinks here that's cool yeah you can actually show the curvature that's quite cool and you can adjust the graph the density how can you understand this graph basically what it tells you is on how strong it curves is indicated by the length of the line if that makes sense so that's a very simple explanation of, of what it does what it what it shows so pretty cool 
pretty looks pretty cool looks very interesting I'm so glad I'm doing this this uh, tutorial because I, I, I would never have thought about it um, yeah and yeah the, the fact that you can scale it it's okay I, I can play around alone position is line tangent is gives you one gives you one control point curvature gives you two control points then with the others you get three or four and you can show the curvature graph enough played around we only want to blend the curve so that could be for example a profile for a seat arc blend so there are other ways to blend and here you just select the curve and it gives you it blends you it blends with an arc with two arcs so you can you can do this then you have two arcs which have the same radius but there's an option which call it's called uh, the radius difference and that means how much different is the one radius to the other radius difference and because this is only the length here is only a bit more than two meaning that one radius is around one i guess so if, if i need to choose a fairly small number and you can see that now this arc has a, a radius difference of plus 0 0.5 and this minus 0 0.5 now by doing this you really learn what's possible in rhino but by going through all these tools it's really good match curves match curves so instead of like adding another curve segment in between it tries to take one of the two curves and in that case the first one match it so it 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 kind of connects with the other one so let's let's try that again and i will choose this one as the first one select open curve to match and then i pick the other one and now you can see that actually it, it bent these this this line here into this curve and now i could play again with the continuity of the two and position again is like just a straight line tangent is like this preserve the other end you can actually not preserve the other end it just just moves the curve that's interesting you can also have a tangent uh, you can have tangency so it's it's a very subtle arc here curvature again this is similar just that you don't have the control points um, average curves takes both curves join means to join them together and now if I do if I okay then it actually created this continuous polyline I like it I see i also never that's the problem you there's so many tools available but they're hardly used i mean especially something like this is very useful for section drawing and landscape for example this one symmetry so symmetry is also interesting it's connects it, so it, cre it creates a mirror of your line wherever you draw the axis but it also connects your curve but best i'm gonna show it so I, I take this select the end of the surface edge or curve edge and can have any axis so this and it always connects the starting point do you have another option here continuity position again position you remember there was just a line connecting you can do this all right so meaning that if you use the smooth if you use continued continuity smooth it creates a continuous st static connection 
and if I use um, something else, the position, it just creates a kink here. The last, the, the last item here, I will actually go through next time. This is all about showing the control points, how to add and manipulate control points. Okay, let's jump into Grasshopper and let's do the Grasshopper version. Fillets. Somebody asked me once, oh, I don't have these green uh, boxes. Why does it look different in your Grasshopper? Well, these are just quick links to the, li to the latest scripts. And if you haven't done any scripts, then you don't have these green boxes. Then they have another color. Let's try to fill it this rectangle here. Or let's have a rectangle and let's have something else. Maybe a pentagon. Fill it here in Curve Utilities. And there are actually three different ways to fill it stuff. Let's get all of these. Fill it. Okay. Okay, let's get the curve in here first. So now we have these two. They're all orange because we need another value or another input. And here we need a radius. Let's try this. Okay. So that's actually pretty quick, pretty quick result. I will hide this. I will also hide these because we want to see the output a bit brighter here. Okay, so that's pretty neat. You can just change the, the fillet. And by the way, if you have more than one sliders with shift you can actually add another slider here and you can have have more than one fillet let's make this a bit wider so you can see it better so you can actually have not just one fillet but several fillets just realize that this has to be a craft so it actually understands that i want to fillet it um several times so you can play with different uh ready and if you want you can move you could move them a sequence no a series of numbers sorry so if i do this and i start with zero and Choose a step size. Let's do this. I need, I need, of course, a direction. You need to, to define the direction, what, where you want to move something. And you could then move them. Uh, let's I'll turn this off. And you can also. If you don't like this like random kind of thing, you could actually have a series of ready. So let's make the steps as 0 0.1. And we, and yeah, you can already see what I want here. I want to actually show a kind of a progression or a transformation um, and the numbers so I can change the numbers and how many I actually want to see here uh, we'll need to talk about flatten and, and craft at some point um, so what I'm doing here is actually because the problem is I created several branches these are not just 10 curves but these are um, 10 curves on a different branch of the data set but if I flatten that it becomes a list of closed curves and then it makes more sense anyway so that's a way to deal with fillets and let's look into that so this one th this is by distance by the way so distance is similar you can just instead of the radius you define the distance from the corner so then you it's not it's not the radius you define, it's the, 
it's distance from the corner there's some kind of a maximum where it cannot move further i hope, I hope it makes sense and then this one curve a parameter with that tool you can say where on the curve the fillet happens i need to show you in order to better understand it but what i need to do is first i need to reparameterize this and now i have a reparameterized curve meaning that it assumes that the length of the curve is one and now what i can do is to add a slider for example one and put it in here and the radius and right, let, let's put a bigger radius so we can see it better so now i can actually control only one corner if i want if you can uh, connect curves let's try these also so i can have two sets of curves And another set of curves uh, probably just a completely wrong one oh. and then connect and then I have here my set the same options I had before you know position tangent curvature that's it's also here and it's it's controlled by just a number so i can change it by by the number and then here these are my is my control sliders which controls the strength of the curvature now you see that some of them come out from this side some of them from the other side from inside you can change that by just flipping them flip that flipped it and this one flip flip If I craft one of these sets, it means that uh, the other set is trying to connect with every curve. You know, so see now this this set of curves tries to connect with with every other curve in the set. Pretty cool. It could be actually really interesting for analysis and plan where you want to analyze like walking connections what you can also do is flipping you can flip curves automatically so you can actually flip a whole set of curves and feed it back in and see what happens so we've actually very simple um, with these very simple tools in, in Grasshopper, you can create some really weird stuff. Let's flip the other one as well. Yeah, it's a bit tedious though. But I mean, I think, you know, especially something like this, where you have a square, you have a, a square and there are buildings and there are roads in between. 
and you want to test how people would cross that 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 square then you can actually just put your starting line and connect with the blend tool that's it what else do we have because connect curves i mean this again these are similar let's try this as well two sets like i delete this So it basically connects all of the curves, all my all my lines with a curve, and then I can choose if um, again I have my options here. It's either just connecting with lines, yeah, tangency, curvature, and so on, and then I can choose if it's closed or not. So I can keep it open with a toggle. boolean toggle so it's either false or true and it says here is it closed or not false or true and then it it's either one open curve and of course i can add the other ones if i want Now you see that there's the order is kind of a bit random, but that was basically in how they were drawn. In sorting these uh, in a specific way, we might could look in, uh, into that in another video. There are ways to actually sort them by, for example, distance to each other or distance to a certain point, and they get sorted in different ways. Cool. I think that's that's quite a lot again. For today the, the video is much longer than i thought sorry so see you next time like and subscribe